Hi everybody. Uh, today I want to talk about the parasite ick or white spot disease. If you will notice I've got a whole lot of neons down there in the bottom and I just pulled them out of my quarantine tank last night and put them in here and I got to thinking about why we quarantine animals and I was going to do a video about quarantining animals but decided not to. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, you never know what you're going to be bringing home. It could have any kind of parasites or illnesses, fungus living on it. You just never know. It's always a good idea to quarantine. However, the main reason I quarantine when I really get right down to it is the fear of ick. Ick is fairly common um, in the pet industry. If you bring fish home, you're going to bring ick home sooner or later. And it's a lot easier to deal with in a quarantine tank than it is to deal with once you've infected your show tank or your full population of your tank. So quarantining is always a good idea. No real need to shoot a video about that per se. So I decided that I would shoot a video about ick because ick is very misunderstood in a lot of cases. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about ick itself, uh, what it is, its life cycle, and so on. And then we are going to discuss treating it with heat. I have treated it with meds before, but I prefer the heat treatment because it's simple, it's easy, it's natural, and it's free, essentially. It just requires heating your tank a little more, but we'll get to that. So, ick is a protozoan parasite. It lives in the fish's flesh. It burrows down through the slime coat and burrows into the flesh of the animal and then lives off of the tissue and fluids of the animal. I know that's not pleasant, but that's how it works. A uh, little teeny teeny tiny thing, can't even see it. But what happens is, after a few days, this little organism that is called a trophozoite, or something like that, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, it actually erupts out of the skin into what is known as a trophant. And the trophant is a free-swimming uh, organism now that is seeking a place to go into its reproductive stage. So it will be free-swimming in the tank until it finds an attachment point. This is typically on the bottom, in the gravel, in the substrate, you know, whatever you've got in the tank. But it will also attach to plants, it'll attach to the glass, filter intakes, whatever. It'll attach to something, and it will then encyst itself. It will become this encapsulated cyst uh, known as a tomant. And within this tomant, it will begin multiplying. Most protozoa multiply by simple division. So you get a doubling of their numbers every reproductive cycle. Ick, however, just multiplies and multiplies and multiplies in these cysts until the cysts erupt. And the tomites that erupt from this cyst are also called swarmers for good reasons. There could be hundreds or even thousands of swarmers coming out of every single cyst. So now your tank is full of hundreds or thousands of these little swarmers that are seeking a new host. And they have to find a host animal within three or four days or they die off. So once they've found the host animal, they start the cycle all over again. They burrow into the animal, they do their thing for a few days, and then they erupt from the flesh, they become free swimmers again, and the cycle starts all over again. So the numbers of these protozoa in your tank can multiply rapidly at the temperatures we typically keep our tropical tanks. We'll get into the temperature again in a minute. It's a very important part of their life cycle is it's temperature dependent. So what's happening to the animal when all of this is going on, the fish that is, is they're being slowly injured by these little tiny animals that are boring into their flesh and then erupting back out of them and feeding on them. So the animals are being stressed, they're being worn down by, you know, it's the death by a thousand cuts. It's, you know, it's just getting beaten on by all these little tiny animals that are uh, eating at it. You're also opening the fish up for secondary infections with fungal infections, bacterial infections. They've got open wounds all over their body. They're very tiny wounds, but they're open wounds nonetheless. And the fish is now susceptible to secondary infection because of this. The real danger for fish that will cause them to succumb much more quickly is if their gills become infected with the ick. And for fairly obvious reasons, as their gills are suffering more and more damage, they lose their ability to exchange gases and they suffocate. 
However, none of this is necessary because ick is nothing more than a nuisance. Ick is very, very easy to treat. It's not some sort of rapid, irreversible process that once you spot it, it's too late. Ick is very easy to treat. It's very easy to deal with. Uh, there's lots of medications on the market that all do their job as far as I know and work very well. Uh, I personally have used a product called Ick Attack. It's an all-natural product. Did exactly what it said. I followed the instructions. I recommend if you want to go that route, go ahead. I'm not going to say not to do that. I simply want to talk about the way I do it because I don't see any need to go out and purchase products. I don't see any need to dose my tanks with any chemicals. Um, I keep my tanks as simple and natural as possible. And simply elevating the temperature is all that's necessary to kill off this ick. Um, at mid 60s temperatures, you know, if you've got a pond outside or something and you've got ick in your pond, it can take up to two weeks for this life cycle to run its full course. At tropical tank temperatures, mid to upper 70s, this whole process takes its about three or four days, maybe five days at the most, if you've got a tank in, say, the low 70s. Some of my tanks are, you know, room temperature at 72, 73 degrees sometimes. 78 degrees, you're looking at maybe three or four days of this life cycle happening. Now, the thing that makes the life cycle important is if you're using medications, the only time the protozoa is susceptible to the medications is during its free swimming stages, either once it's erupted and is looking to go into the reproductive state, or it has erupted from the reproductive state and is looking for a new host. These are the only times it's susceptible to meds. As far as heat treatment is concerned, the same kind of holds true, but as far as I understand it, if the animal uh, and the tank temperature is simply elevated, whether it's in the cyst form or it's in the animal itself, these temperatures will still kill it off. Either way, I suppose none of that makes any difference because whether you're using the meds or the heat treatment, you still want to do this for a full 10 days. You want to make sure you've done this long enough that it's had at least time enough for a full life cycle and you've gotten every single stage of it treated. But I'm getting ahead of myself again. The way to treat it is simply to elevate the temperatures. We don't want to elevate the temperatures rapidly, no more than two degrees Fahrenheit or one degree Celsius per hour. I don't even heat them that rapidly. I generally heat them about one degree Fahrenheit per hour. Uh, if you turn your tank heater up depending on the size of the tank you can just crank it up sometimes it takes more than an hour to raise it one degree if you're using a small heater in a fairly large tank so use your own judgment use your own caution but don't really raise the temperature faster than two degrees per hour fahrenheit once you've gotten up to 85 degrees fahrenheit the ick parasite will no longer find a new host it will no longer attach so theoretically that is a sufficient temperature to eradicate it it simply dies off after several days of not being able to attach to a new host at 86 degrees it is unable to reproduce so again if you go up to 86 87 degrees you're now blocking it from attaching to a new animal and you're also preventing it from reproducing so once its life cycle has run its course you don't have any more ick in the tank it's done at 89.5 degrees fahrenheit you just simply kill it with temperature so that's the way i've treated it i've run my tank up into the upper uh, uh i'm sorry upper 80s not the upper 90s i've run it into the upper 80s at about 89 to 90 degrees again with the thermometer you got to give or take maybe a degree variance there so i always try to go a little above what they recommend just to be sure that my thermometer is not lying to me and telling me i'm a degree off a degree can be the difference between whether this process works or doesn't work. You have to get it above 86 degrees Fahrenheit for this process to work. Again, theoretically, 85 degrees would work, but I don't trust that. I've never heard that recommended. It's always 86 degrees as your minimum temperature. Once you've done that, you simply allow the tank to run its course for 10 days, and then at the end of that 10 days, your ick will be gone. Now, a couple little things to note is there is one strain of ick in Florida that is known to survive temperatures up to 92 degrees. So if you are still seeing issues with your fish after four or five days of treatment, you may want to consider another treatment because it may be 
as unlikely as it could be, it still could be a heat resistant strain and you may have to deal with it in other ways. Another very important thing to note is warmer water holds less oxygen. So the warmer you get your tank, the more you need surface agitation. And by the time you're up into 85 to 86, 87 degrees, especially if you really want to blast it and go up to 90, which in most cases is fine. You may have some sensitive fish that can't deal with temperatures that high. So watch your animals as you're raising your temperatures. Look for signs of distress. Do some research on your animals if you think you have animals that can't deal with you know, warmer temperatures, don't be mistaken by the fact that if it's called a cold water fish, like a goldfish uh, or a bass or something, they, they live in 90 degree temperatures all the time. Uh, the reservoir I fish in has cold water fish and it, it's bath water by the end of the summer. So do your research before you start cranking your temperatures up and don't be fooled by things like cold water fish. Do your research, know that your fish can deal with those kinds of temperatures. Most of them can, if they're called tropical fish, they can probably quite easily deal with 88 to 90 degree temperatures. That should be all you need to worry about. Really, really well oxygenated water. It's not a bad idea to do frequent water changes during this process. Um, if you are removing water and you're vacuuming the gravel, if you don't have a planted tank, you are pulling some of the parasites out of the water. You're pulling some of the parasites out of the gravel and reducing the numbers in the tank isn't going to hurt. It's not necessary because you're killing them, but removing them is certainly not going to hurt. If you're, you know, at, at worst, you're, you're keeping the water a little bit cleaner for the animals who have all these little tiny open sores all over them, so you're helping to reduce secondary infections. So doing water changes during this whole process is always a good idea. Not necessary, but a good idea. Keeping the tank well aerated is critical during this. Again, the temperature will push the oxygen out of the water. You really, really got to make sure you've got a lot of surface agitation. I really recommend putting a good solid air stone or even if you've got a bar and you can put, you know, just a lot of surface agitation to keep the tank very well oxygenated. And that should really be all that you need to do to deal with it. Dispelling a few myths about ick is the idea that it somehow lives in your tank all the time. I hear this all the time. Uh, I was just boning up on some P's and Q's last night when I was reading about this. And three or four of the sites I went to, I just had to shake my head. These are reputable sites that I rely on for information when I'm doing research. And they're in there explaining to me how we all have ick in our tank at all times. And it's just that's simply not true. That is not true at all. If the animal, if the, if the protozoa does not find a host animal within a few days, it simply dies. It cannot live in your tank without being attached to a fish. If it is attached to a fish, you're going to see signs of it. So the idea that it's there and not doing anything is a myth. You can have animals that are fighting it very well and you may not notice it for a little while and it may sort of seem to appear out of nowhere, but it will not get in your tank unless you've introduced it into your tank. So, back to the quarantine aspect of it, that's the easiest way to deal with ick, and it's simply to prevent it. It's very, very easy to prevent by quarantining your animals. There's a lot of ways we can bring ick home without even knowing we're doing it. It's a very uh, easy mistake to make. Uh, remember what I said about the free swimming uh, form, whether it's dropped off the fish and is looking to find its reproductive state or it's left its reproductive state and is looking for new hosts, it's microscopic. You can't see it. So you could bring a bag of water home from the fish store that's got fish swimming around in it that could have hundreds of swarmers in there that you don't notice. So it's always a good idea to not use the water from the fish store into your tank. You could be pouring hundreds of parasites into your tank. And there could be other things as well. I'm just focusing on the ick. Uh, but it's always a good idea to net your fish out of that water after you've acclimated them, uh, etc. Don't use that fish store water into your tank. You, you're, you're just asking for trouble eventually if you do that. Another way we can bring it home from the fish store is simply bringing an infected fish home and not noticing. In the very early stages, you're not going to see any outward signs of white spots. That comes a little later. Um, if you don't really know what you're looking at, you might not notice the early signs of flashing, um, hanging out near filter intakes, typical signs of distress that you might simply associate for, well, the fish is stressed out because it's in a new environment or whatever, but it may actually be showing early signs of ick. So that's a way to bring it home. The ick could be on the gills of the animal, which you simply can't see, 
and you can introduce it into your tank that way. Any tank, um, any plant that you bring home that is in a tank that contains fish could also contain ick. Remember, the um, reproductive state finds a surface to adhere to and insist itself. So, plants that are in a tank that have infected fish also could be carrying hundreds or thousands of little tomites that are ready to erupt into your tank as soon as you bring those plants home. So it's always important to either quarantine your plants if you do so for a week. Again, without a host animal, the ick will simply die off and your plants will be fine. You won't have anything to worry about. Um, keep in mind, if you are bringing home plants from a plant-only tank that does not have fish in it, that will only be safe if it's a closed system. If you're in one of these big chain pet stores where every tank is run on the same water system, every tank is, is the same. You know, you can't say, well, this tank down here has a fish that has ick, but these tanks over here are fine. They all have it if that's the way they run their system. It's got to be a closed system, but if you've got a plant-only tank, you don't have to worry about bringing ick home. It's a fish-only disease. It lives on the animal without a host. It cannot survive. So if you've got ick in your tank, it's because you put it there. Understanding how ick lives and its life cycle is the key to preventing it from ever getting in your tank in the first place. But if it happens, which it will, we all get it, it's very easy to heat with treat, uh, treat with heat. Simply take the temperature up slowly to about 86 to 87 degrees, leave it there for 10 days, watch your fish very carefully during this process to make sure they're not undergoing any stress, do your frequent water changes, make sure the tank is very well aerated, and after 10 days slowly bring your temperature back down to your normal temperatures, do one final nice big water change, get everything all cleaned up and back to running and your problems with ick should be done. If you do have fish that are severely distressed, they're covered in ick, they're covered in white spots, if you're rescuing a fish that's severely ill, you may need to do emergency treatment, you may need to do a salt bath or you may need to do emergency meds or something like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm simply talking about you noticed you've got a little outbreak of ick, your fish are starting to get some white spots on them and it's time to treat the tank. It's no more than a nuisance. If an animal dies from ick, it's due to neglect and nothing else. There's no excuse not to simply deal with ick very quickly and easily if you get it. Nothing more than a nuisance. So I hope that was helpful to somebody and I hope you subscribe if you're not already. You never know what you're going to get with me and I am actually working on quite a few videos this weekend. I got a lot going on down here in the fish room so stay tuned for plenty coming up. Thanks again for watching this one and I will see you real soon on the next one.